Well, thanks for staying with us this Friday morning. While it may seem as though Nymed's three-day of thunderstorms warning seems to be relaxing, it's more focused on the conclusion of campaigns ahead of tomorrow, the D-Day in the Edo Guba polls. Now, this leads one of the prominent issues in the news as captured by the dailies. We look to expand this conversation with the hope that you too can also give a situation report if you're in Bini City or are planning to be a part of the elections. Now, joining us in the studio to share thoughts on these developments as well is Comrade Richard Romanos. Good morning to you. Morning, you too. Good morning to you as well, uh, comrade. Well, uh, let's start off. The elections is just barely 24 hours away. True. It's a hugely contested election, and many people uh, must say, have said that apart from the political newbies who are contesting in the election, there are other political gladiators and godfathers who have keen interest for the most vied for position in the state. Mm -hmm. What is your reaction uh, to all of these events leading up to the Edo polls? Uh, well, I am not surprised with what is happening in Edo State. I'm not surprised in the sense that um, um, Edo State has always been um, has always been that way, you know. Each time there are elections, you know, and um, for tomorrow's governorship election, yes. you know, I I have always known that it was going to be that way. The reason being that. Um, in the last four years, uh, Governor Godwin Obasiki seemed to have um, angered a whole lot of people, you know, both politicians within the state and outside the state, you know. Hence, I have always known that um, the day will come where some or most of these politicians will want to extract their pound of flesh, you know, from him. Um, as I sit here, I cannot tell you that um, I cannot easily predict who is easily going to have the day, you know, because whether you like it or not, the election is definitely going to be a keenly contested election. Yeah, just, just yesterday, I saw Governor Godwin Obasiki on TV talking about, a question was thrown at him where he said, uh, if uh, he was worried about um, uh, the Minister of FCT not uh, supporting his candidate, he said he's not worried because Edo people uh, will, oh, wow. choose, will choose who will be their governor. But that again is even is contradictory. In 2020, when he was seeking re-election, he ran to Edo State to go and, uh, to go and seek for the support of Wike. I remember that Nelson Wike relocated from his state as governor then to Edo State for that election. Yes. And Nelson Wike was a critical factor that made him run, that made him win that election. In, in fact, as you ask, if you ask me, if you ask me, almost all the political indices that led to Governor what Governor Basiki's emergence in 2020 are today against him. And unfortunately, he is not going to be the victim. It is his candidate, so, uh, so, yeah. as well, Godalo. So yes. do you think this categorically tells us that the FCT minister would be well behind uh, Mondio Pebolo other than being behind Godalo? Like I said, Godwin Obasiki in the last four years has carried on as though he was never going to need any politician in Nigeria to get his successor or to success, uh, um, support his successor. And Governor Nelson Wiki was one of those persons, you know. And whether you like it or not, I have said here that so many politicians will want to extract their pound of flesh from Governor Godwin or Basiki. And trust me, Wiki is one of those persons. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I am sure that Wiki is definitely going to be interested it's, it's, in it. It's very evident because it brings it to the question of federal might. Exactly. Now that uh, the FCT minister is appointed by the APC governor, the APC candidate in Edo State, Mondeo Pueblo, is looking to tap into that federal might. You saw the, the rally by the APC, the vice president, the senate president all there, and it almost feels as though even though the FCT minister was not on camera there, listening to uh, comments made by uh, Senator Adams Oshomole, he seemed to have, uh, in some subtle manner, 
also put that into the conversation again again like i told you earlier uh, so many indices so many factors that were responsible for governor basiki's um, re-election in 2020 you know one of those indices or uh, factors was that the federal government as at the time you know uh, was somehow neutral you know so it allowed for a free and fair process you know what i don't know is if this current federal government you know would allow for a free fair credible election might like i said like i said in this election the do state governorship election pdp are still in this race the pdp the people's democratic party are still in this race yes because of one man the candidacy of Aswe Godalo. Trust me, I sincerely want to see that man become governor. Sincerely. Because whether we like it or not, we have had enough of good politicians. Let's begin to have good leaders. Let's begin to advocate for good leaders. And, and, and he seems to be the people's favorite and, at this and, point. And, and, and without fear or favor, I would say it is evidently clear that Aswe Godalo will make a good governor. Well, sometimes they, uh, they come and tell us all manner of sweet stuff, and when they get there, they do a different thing. But I don't think that Aswe is that type of man. But I am scared because I hope, I hope that um, he doesn't become, um, he doesn't become the fall guy. Uh, he doesn't become a basically fall guy. You know, Obasiki is an outgoing governor. He has absolutely nothing to lose. To lose yes. The only person that has something to lose right there is Aswe Godalo. If he wins. Who? Who? No, 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 no. That is if he loses. Oh, okay, okay. I am saying that because of the many um, enemies, uh, enemies of Basiki has procured for himself. He might inherit them. The, the well, person well, well, I mean, even in inheriting these enemies, even if he wins, this this enmity could extend well into his tenure, which which we have seen in the case of uh, the River State Governor who had a fallout with his principal, uh, Barrister Yeson Wiki, and you know the tension that is currently going on in River State. This might be a replication in Edo. No, uh, for me, for me, what is important here is if Igodalo wins. It is fine. I think that is that is what Obasiki wants at this time. You know, my only my only problem is that right now, as of today, as of today, except again, again, let me say this: those people will be for me would will finally solidify their place in my heart as some of the most um, sophisticated voters, if. If Aswe Godalo emerges winner of these elections, you know, why I say this is because politicians have ganged up and are coming for Basiki's head. Now, 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 if you look at the picture that, that was painted during the last uh, general elections, uh, it, it appeared as if just uh, three political parties were vying for the presidency uh, APC, the PDP, and the Labour Party, and the same portrait is being painted in the Edo polls this time around as all three of them are from the APC, PDP and the Labour Party and it appears that only the APC candidate is the, the candidate who has had about a year's experience in politics. The rest of the two are newbies. Uh, you, you have been talking about the APC candidate and the PDP candidate. Let, let's talk about uh, uh, Akpata, Olumide Akpata. Let's talk about him. Uh, a one-time uh, NBA president and now he's in politics. What, what, what does this mean for him? Uh, is there any light at the end of the tunnel for this um, lawman who is suddenly delving into politics well well um in 2023 general elections uh something very novel happened and that stuff that thing was that even when people were shouting oh peter b had no structures had no structures i'm sure that so many people were surprised about the kind of votes he got 
you know, Peter, Peter Biv won so many states that nobody believed Peter Biv was going to win. Yeah. And this is a man that we say had no structures. So how did he win? You know, uh, I, I, I don't know if that is going to happen in Edo, but that was why I said Edo people over time have proven to be very, very, very sophisticated in terms of voting. Don't forget, Peter B won in Edo State in the last um, presidential elections, you know. But what I don't know is if Edo people will also will replicate what they did in 2023 presidential, presidential election for Olumide Akbata. And give it to Olumide Akbata. The guy has been, I have also um, followed his campaigns, you know. The guy... I also think would make a good governor. His, his, his sound manifesto was very robust. Very robust. Yeah. You know, his sound, he has a clear vision for Edo State. You know, I like his ideas and all of that. But politics, they say, is local. You know, um, uh, Ulumi Dakpata is also running against the tide. Zoning yes. is not in his favor. You know, and whether you like it or not, these are some very strong indices, you know, that would definitely um, uh, uh, um, work against. Uh, now, now when, you, when you talk about zoning, you're talking about the, the internal zoning. The internal zoning the yeah, yeah, internal zoning formula. Yes. You know, I think he comes from where could the current governor is from. come from, you know. So, I mean, you cannot, you cannot have your brother, you know, occupying his seat. And then, and then you, you have after the, somebody years, from the same uh, place yeah, yeah, occupying the same position. Exactly. So whether you like it or not, you know, these are some of the things that will work against him. By and large, I, I, I sincerely, well, well, I, I pray that, um, I pray that um, maybe something happens. But sincerely, um, if I must be sincere here, you know, uh, I don't see Olumide Akpata. Maybe, uh, like they say in their political, um, uh, uh, this thing. Maybe this may be his own political uh, baptism, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's also factor in their running mates because we saw the current governor, Godwin Obaseke, and his deputy fall out at some point. The court had to come back, reinstate. But in terms of the current political parties leading the race, the three horses, the key figures, and now their running mates, the Labour Party's candidate, Mr. Olumide Akbata, much like you rightly stated, has zoning against him. Another thing the online polls are saying he has against him is his running mate, which the good people of Edo State consider to be largely an outsider. And they've also cited the fact that the Labour Party, much at the grassroots and rural areas in Edo State, is totally absent. Many are saying he might just hinge the support he's getting from the NBA and uh, the carryover of the 2023 presidential popularity of the Labour Party. How much does the running mate factor affect this joint ticket? Uh, in fact, it does. In 2020, when Obasiki was seeking for re-election, one of the persons that was that was instrumental, instrumental so to, to his re-election was his deputy, Philip Shaibu. Philip, Shaibu. Philip, Shaibu. Philip Shaibu, whether anybody likes it or not, is politically rooted. Politics is his stuff. You know, he knows exactly how to play. Play. You know. That was why Obasiki was able to do some of the things he did. You know. So whether you like it or not, the choice of running mate also matters. You know. And just like I, told, I said earlier, for Olumide Akwata, that again tells you, that again tells you the um, political, um, uh, uh, um, uh, should I say, how political novice you know he that is, he is. Yes. You know. Whether you like it or not, the choice of your can your deputy governor and the choice of um, uh, where he comes from, you know, also matters. Because while you are expecting to cover point A, it is expected that your deputy governor should cover point B. Point B yes. You know, but in this case, I don't think that the Lumide Akpata and his party. Um, took uh, cognizance of this consideration. But this is not even the case with Obasiki or PDP and APC. And APC yes. You know, 
Now, the deputy governor of um, the, the nominee, running mate of uh, Monday, Senator Monday, you know, Kwebolo, yes, you know, is a seven house of rep member. Um, uh, what's his name? Something in Dahosa, you know. Now, whether you like it or not, Dahosa is representing at least two local government areas in the state, in the state, in that state, you know. So, even if you take every other thing away from him. If you that local government away from him, you see those two local government are where he comes from. It is expected that, that he will deliver the vote. expected that he should deliver the vote from those two, two local government areas. Yes. And that is what the election is. You know, if you go to the deputy governor of um, the running mate of um, Asue Godalo, the, the running mate is a serving or okay until recently resigned as the SSG of um, the, the Obasiki led administration. And from what I heard in the field, he's Actually, a very popular man. Well very grounded in politics. Very in the grounded, state. very loved, you know. And I'm sure that that is um, uh, one of the considerations that actually um, uh, led to his consideration as a running mate. So I am saying that whether we like it or not, the choice of running mate, you know, contributes very, very, very well, you know in um, the outcome of a um, uh, governorship election you know now, now let's let's talk about external factors that might uh, be key to uh, you know who wins this particular election we have the president who people are insinuating is you know throwing his weight behind the APC candidate uh, former Vice President Hatiku Abubakar is solidly behind the PDP candidate. And of course, Peter B has been quite vocal about uh, Olumide Apata. Of all these three, who do you think that perhaps uh, is is more grounded to ensure that their candidate wins? I mean, this is no longer a fight amongst the contestants. It's now a fight amongst these three giants. Oh, uh, well, um, I think that... Um these people's support at this time is almost inconsequential. It is inconsequential because after jumping from jumping in that podium the other day, you know, in the name of campaigning for this candidate, I mean, they left almost 40 one hour later out of the state. They don't vote there. They don't vote there, you know. The only thing they would possibly do for their candidate is make calls. Uh, support with finances, if need be, and all of that. And, and influence in terms of lobbying and all. And influence in terms of lobbying. Lobbying who, and as a matter of fact, the people. Only the yes. people. You know. Um, apart from that, apart from that, the people of Edo State, you know, the people of Edo State will vote for who they want, you know. But, but, I am not saying that, especially, especially, in the, among the three of them, the person that actually has what it takes to indirectly influence, should I say directly? More like federal to, might. Yeah, more, than, more like federal might. He's a sitting president of Nigeria. If he wants a those state to be recruited into his party as APC, APC, then he has all it takes, you know, to actually do that. You know, there are too many things he can do to actually uh, bring a do state into the um, APC APC fold, but um, uh, in a do state as are today, yes, like I was saying or like I started by saying, thirteen House of Rep members. Only one is PDP. All, I mean one or two, are Labour Party. Others are APC. Are APC. Three senators, one Labour Party, two APC. APC. About 25 House of Assembly members or so, 15 PDP, um, seven APC, and a few others, um, uh, uh, Labour Party. Labour Party. You know. um, the only thing, the Obasiki, uh, the PDP has going for them, maybe, are the local government structures, the local government and all of that. So, with this analysis I have given to you, the breakdown of who has what in terms of elect um, elected um, offices, you know, who do you think 
can win in that type of election? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a big question. <laughs> now, now, comrade, I want you to react to something. Uh, and, and let me use this phrase, Edo no be Lagos. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Very vividly. I remember. Now, this is something that many people believe that uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki said to spite the president. Yes. And uh, somehow, mm. they feel like the president will certainly come back for his pound of flesh. But, but, statements are also coming out from the presidency that the president has no interest whatsoever in the Edo elections. Why do we see these contradicting uh, statements? A again, again, like I said, like I said, remember I used to have told you here that Obasiki in the last four years carried on as though he was never going to need anybody or he was never going to be interested in who succeeds him as governor. You know, <laughs> no reasonable politician, you know, bonds bridges like bonds that. bridges like Obasiki, Obasiki did. No reasonable politician. In this country, we saw Yes, on Wiki, he locates from River State Government House to Edo just to support Obasiki. The videos are still on the internet where he was received, he was given a rosy welcome in uh, River State when Obasiki was eventually declared winner. In fact, shortly after Obasiki was declared winner, one of the first places he visited. One of the first places he went to Potak. to say thank you was Patakot. The videos of the role Nyeso Wike played over that election are still yeah. on the internet. Now, very quickly, we have 15 minutes just to wrap up this newspaper review segment. We're hoping we can touch on at least three items. Uh, let's keep quite of the items in the news and come down to the PDP, since we're still talking PDP issues. But now, in terms of the acting chairman position, Damagun, we see a fracture amongst the PDP governors, whilst the likes of Governor Shea Makinde, the likes of Governor Ademola Adeleke have thrown their weight behind Damagun. Those in Bochi are not too, uh, too happy with the way he has carried his affairs in the PDP and reports are that they are plotting to sack him. Many are looking at it as an extension of the entire position of PDP. Are they in crisis? How did they put their house in order ahead of 20? 27 now that even amongst the governors they are split on the position of the national chairmanship let's get your thoughts on that okay um i pity pdp i pity pdp because uh the party is currently on life support you know any moment from now the party may just die except something miraculous um eventually happens it has always been my position that only four governors, as are today in PDP, can rescue the party. The governor of Bauchi, the governor of Adamawa, Bayesa. Okay, five. Um, or your state, and then... Maybe a No, a no, Not even a quite. Not even a quite. You know why? why? These why? are second-term governors. They have no election to run in future. So... All they can do, all they would do, all they should do is to try is to, to salvage, try to the, salvage the, the situation. Since they have nothing to lose in future, you know. I mean, just when I thought that okay, the PDP, the governors are waking up, you know, judging by the statement of um, Bala Mohammed in um, in um, Bauchi, uh, Shai Makinde said that thing you're saying, I am not with you, and. A moment later, Fintri of Adamawa said, I am with Shehi Makinde. So, this governor, um, Bayesa, since he won his re-election, has been deaf and dumb. <laughs> He's not, I'm not, I am, I'm not even seeing him. He has not been even, quite I'm, vocal I am not even news. seeing him in anything that has to do with He's been very diplomatic but, about but, making but, statements. But, but I wish I can actually say some of the things I think is making him keep quiet on TV. You know, but that is so, what well, it, maybe you can give us a hint of it. But that is what <laughs> is it is. While also but, being diplomatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> the, the truth about it is that we know... I followed the, um, his election bit quite keenly, you know, and I can say that, um, but not for the tacit support he got from the federal government. Tacit support, not in terms of, oh, we are supporting you. 
that is support in ensuring a free, fair, credible election, you know, and then a free, fair, um, <clears throat> a free, fair, ensuring that the judiciary, you know, does not um, interfere in um, interfere in um, uh, the uh, is it post election post election, post -election yes. matters. Yes. You know that should have been one of the reasons why he, the governor, may not be uh, may not be speaking out. You know, and then you go to the <clears throat> the first term governors. These first term governors, like I said, they have something to lose. They have something to lose in the sense that whether they like it or not. They are going to face the election. They, they are going to face the election in 2027. You know, would they want to begin to burn some bridges? You know, that may help them. You know, in securing the election in their various states. No, no. Just sorry. Yes. Just a few days ago, it was reported that Moeno, the governor of Akwaibo, you know, while flagging off the local government elections in this in the, in the state won the chairmanship candidates not to make antagonistic statements yes. against the APC-led federal government. They should concentrate in their campaigns and leave some other matters. Do you understand? What does that tell you? This is a man who wants to, who is trying to be careful. <laughs> Don't forget, he has a very tough election in his hands, whether he likes it or not. The Senate President of Nigeria is from his state. Yes. And Come 2027. Yes. And whether you like it or not, what will make uh, Senator Obod Gosfil Akpabi tick, politically tick and powerful, if if is if he's able to enroll Akpabi State into his party, you cannot be a Senate President, the, the number three man in the country. And for and eight your, years, your 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 your, your state has your state a, state different, a different party. a different political party. You know, the same thing is applicable to the new sheriff in Delta. You know, the okay. news. <laughs> <laughs> well, very quickly, gentlemen, time is coming to a close. There's another issue in the news which uh, a lot of Nigerians and our viewers will be looking to also gain insight and your opinions on, okay. especially with this characters of sitting governors influencing successors and successors feeling they need to be loyal at all costs, even when the rule of law is somehow put into question. The ex governor of Kogi State. Mm. His battle with the EFCC. We, we saw quite the controversy yesterday. EFCC saying no, he's not in our custody. Him posting pictures in the company of Governor Usman Ododo escorting him to the EFCC headquarters. Let's quickly get your position on this. Sincerely, uh, as we say it in the streets, that one said no claim me. What, <laughs> <laughs> what happened in what happened in EFCC that day? Sincerely, I don't understand. Is it because Yaya Bello? was escorted to that premises by a sitting governor, was that why the ESCC couldn't arrest him? What exactly is it? Like somebody walked, somebody you declared wanted, somebody you say you're looking for, took himself to your premises and you didn't arrest him. We saw, I mean, we saw videos. It's not as though it was alleged. We saw videos. <laughs> he came to your premises and according to his, um, his um, press guy, he said the EFCC couldn't even ask him a question. What happened? According to what's his name, um, uh, is it uh, Shaibu something Shaibu, the guy from uh, at one of these articles as his way. Yes. He, he, he called it. Um, he called it. Uh, there's a name he called it. He said, according to him, what happened was completely juju and all of that. But that is not even my business. You know, I am just. I am just. I am just. I feel. I feel. I feel really ashamed. You know. You cannot say you cannot say you're declaring a government is somebody wanted and the person walk up to you and you are not arresting but, but, him. And but, then sorry yes. and then sorry. Sincerely, I don't know if what Ododo, Usman Ododo, the governor of Kogi, I don't know what he's doing actually. You know. Why is he shielding why does it seem like he's shielding he's using his, immunity. He's using his immunity to shield Yahya Bello, for God's sake. I mean firstly, Yahya Bello is his principal. And somehow it's re it's regarded that he brought him into power. That aside, what many people want to know is why did EFCC take so much time in apprehending? Well, he has not been apprehended at this point, but why did they take so much time in ensuring that Yaya Bello comes in for this questioning that uh, they allege that he walked into their office? I mean, if you are looking for someone, 
an organization as highly placed as EFCC, you shouldn't allow the person consult with lawyers and family and political associates first before deciding to honor your invitation. Well, again, I I want to say that um, well, uh, Yaya Bello is lucky to have his own party at the hems of affairs. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Are, are you maybe. are you saying what I'm saying? No, 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 no. I am only saying. Is it mm. maybe, maybe? Just are, maybe. May, just maybe. Powers that be. I they are just him. trying to trying to give him some kind of a safe landing. I'm not. I'm not saying this for a fact. Yes. I'm just saying maybe. You know. But I take very strong exceptions to the fact that Governor Usman Ududo has constantly, you know, used his position. To shield governor or uh, former governor, almost like yeah. extending oh. his own immunity um, to the like former governor. Now, you can imagine the videos we saw a few. Uh, uh, so, was it last night or a few and nights ago? Emanating from his residence, yeah, emanating from Asokuru. Not even his residence. The gov uh, governor's lodge, lodge of Kogi. This is what is a former governor still doing in the governor's lodge in Kogi? If I mean the the only idea, the only reason why a former governor. Is still in the governor's lodge of Kogi is because you want you 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 are, you are shielding him and for God's sake, Governor Yaya, former Governor Yaya Bello, what is he really scared of? What offense has he committed actually? You know, I mean, if he knows his hands are clean, I mean, there is a popular saying, uh, uh, clear, 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 clear ac accusations yeah. or yeah, clear, uh, clear uh, conscience, fears no accusations. Yes. You know, if you know you have. Clear conscience. If you know you have done absolutely nothing wrong, if you know you have not tempered with Kogi State funds, please come out and face your issues. Come out and tell the EFCC this, uh, this is this, this is it, this is it, this is it. Unfortunately, unfortunately for him, or, or fortunately for him, the the what's it called? Yes. In the last in the last few in the last few weeks or in the last few months, you know, the EFCC remember if you Nigerians, majority of Nigerians believe that they have been they have been playing to the gallery gallery. Yes. You know, the, what they have been, what we've been seeing them do is media trials, you know. And I had thought that Yahya Bello can capitalize on those kind of um, that kind of stuff, you know. To clear his conscience, to, clear, yeah, his to, name. to to say, come, what I have been, what I've been facing yes. is complete media trial. You know, I am here to look at what former governor Ayofayoshi did. Shortly after he left office, he drove straight with the customized T-shirt EFCC. I am here today. He's not walking the streets of He's Nigeria. He's walking free in the streets. He's walking of free in the, in the streets of Nigeria. So you, Governor Yaya Bello, if you know your your hands are clean. If you know you have absolutely nothing to fear, go to go, go to the EFCC and clear your name. I don't understand why a former governor, I mean, EFCC is placing you wanted. Uh, this agency of uh, secretary agency is saying you are wanted and all of it is. I mean, it is shameful. It is shameful uh, and not not good for the image of uh, the president uh, Bola Metinubu's administration too. Well, uh, Comrade uh, Richard Romanos, I must thank you so much. It's been a very um, impactful deliberation here on the program. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.